Hello, my name is Darla Combs. I'm the senior principal at Midwest City High School. Welcome to the first virtual commencement ceremony for the 76th graduating class of Midwest City High School, the class of 2020. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose stripes and bright stars fill the perilous sight? For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Thank you to the Senior Ensemble for that wonderful rendition of our National Anthem. Hello, my name is Dr. LaShonda Broyles, and it is my privilege to be the principal of Midwest City High School, home of the Bombers. I would like to welcome everyone watching to the 76th Commencement Program for Midwest City High School. At this time, we would like to recognize the members of our Board of Education and our District Administration. Board of Education. Mr. Leroy Porter, President, Mrs. Jimmy Nolan, Clerk, Mr. Nathan McGuire, Member, Mr. Julian Biggers, Member, and Dr. Sylvia Kirk, Member. Our District Administration, Dr. Rick Cobb, Superintendent, Dr. Jason Perez, Deputy Superintendent, Mrs. Kathy Dunn, Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning, Dr. Cordell Eric, Executive Director of Secondary Instruction, Mrs. Leslie Pope, Executive Director of Elementary Instruction, Ms. K. Medcalf, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Mike Bryan, Executive Director of Operations, Dr. Scott Hazelwood, Executive Director of Technology, Mrs. Stacy Boyer, Director of Community Relations and Records Management, Mr. Dean Hinton, Director of Special Services, Mr. Andy Collier, Director of Student Activities, Mrs. Kristen Ashley, Director of Student Services, Mrs. Shelley Fox, Director of Child Nutrition. Mrs. Lacey Brown, Director of Federal Programs. And Mr. Rick Mendenhall, Chief Operations Officer for Middale Technology Center. I would also like to take this time to introduce the administrators of Midwest City High School. Ms. Darla Combs, Senior Assistant Principal. Mrs. Leslie Berger, junior slash academic assistant principal, Mrs. Andra Gilkey, sophomore assistant principal, and Mr. Jimmy Brown, freshman assistant principal. Our counselors, Ms. Jamie Butler, Mrs. Cindy Counts, Mrs. Anita Keith, and Ms. Jennifer Thomas. And the backbone of any great school, the faculty of Midwest City High School. Thank you, teachers. And at this time, I would like to call Ms. Combs up to the podium, and she will now recognize our valedictorians. Our valedictorians are graduates who have maintained a four point grade point average throughout all four years of their high school careers. 
Before I introduce our valedictorians of the class of 2020, I would like to take the opportunity to explain the additional recognitions denoted in the program. The white robes denoted the National Honor Society, students who have maintained a 3.5 overall grade point average, as well as earned leadership points. The gold cords worn by some of the members represent that they are three-year members. The silver and purple stoles worn recognize our technology students that are members of the National Vocational Technical Honor Society. To maintain membership, students must continue to earn all A's, have great behavior, excellent attendance, and perform community service. Also recognized in our programs are the students that are receiving the Certificate of Distinction. These students have taken what is called the 4x4 curriculum. Each of the four classes, all four years, as well as two years of foreign language and two years of fine arts or technology, while maintaining a 3.2 grade point average. Landon Boyard. Nichelle Dawkins. Jacob Dayton. Wesley Dedman. Mackenzie Dawkin. Amaya Evans. Nyla Fields. Mariah Hawkins. Elliot Yanish. Jacoby Johnson. Ty Keith. Megan Lancaster. Thomas McNair. Angelina Newton. Ashley Peak. Abigail Peterson. Emma Ramirez. Shawnee Ray. Carlos Rollins. Mark Rose. Raynova Shelton. Jaden Slaughter. Kaylin Strunk. Gavin Tamonte. Brian Taranez, Colin Wilmoth. At this time, I am honored to introduce Mr. Mark Robert Rose. He is the senior class president. Mark plans on attending Texas Christian University next fall. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Robert Rose. Hello everyone, I am the Senior Class President Mark Rose and I want to begin by thanking all of the parents, guardians, and family members who have been watching out for us the last 18 years and in particular the past few months. I know it's not exactly a vacation staying at home with your kids considering we teenagers can be a bit irritable, yet you still care and provide for us and for that I'd like to say thank you. I also want to extend the Senior Class's gratitude to the teachers, faculty, and administration at Midder City High School who have been guiding us, teaching us, and um, watching out for us for the last four years and have continued to stay dedicated to our learning even after traditional schooling has been thrown out the window. A senior class is grateful for each and every one of you. Seniors, it's been a crazy ride. These past four years have been filled with ups, downs, lefts, rights, and everything in between. Every late night studying, Friday football game, dress up week, lunch meeting, assembly, concert, every moment since we entered the doors in 2016 in Midwest City has led to this moment where we close this chapter of our lives and start the next one. I know this is not the finale of our high school career that we have wanted or have pictured the last 12 years, but it could be a lot worse. There's a quote that is mistakenly attributed to Abraham Lincoln that is thought to have come from Alfonso Carr that states, we can complain because rose bushes have thorns or rejoice because thorn bushes have roses. Now, I did not just add that quote because of my last name. I also added that quote to say that even though senior year did not end as we expected, we can still be grateful for the memories that we have made and the amazing times we've had before the last few months were derailed. 
those that know me know that I'm pretty sentimental. So before talking about our future, I'd like to do a quick recap of our last four years together. Freshman year was when we were first introduced in Midway City, and a lot of us started off as shy and nervous ninth graders who did not know who they were yet. We found friendships in our awkwardness, and we made, com from, and we made companions who would eventually become our lifelong friends. Our confidence grew sophomore year, which is when students united with teachers and administrators to protest at the state capitol for more attention and support for education and those who make it possible. The junior year was filled with celebrations and memorable moments, such as the 2020 class, our class, winning the school-wide homecoming float building contest, which is made possible due to the, due to the incredible support of Ms. Friesen and all those who worked hard on it. We also held school debates between the Constitution and the Articles of Confederation, which was honestly the first time a lot of us had even known that that existed. There's also a certain historical rap battle that I hope Mr. Gregg has deleted off of YouTube, but let's not get into that. Senior year was when we became the leaders of the school, with many of us holding positions of leadership in the school's different organizations, with seniors occupying roles of presidents, princesses, escorts, and many more. This year, Jacoby Johnson and Nyla Fields won Mr. and Mrs. MCHS and Homecoming King and Queen. This year, over 20 of us, 25 to be exact, stood in the pouring rain to receive our 4.0 jackets that we've been working on the last four years, and which was also worth every single second out in the pouring rain. We also celebrated our senior year together after a crazy overtime game against Choctaw that we will all remember for years to come. Over the past four years, we have raised over $100,000 for members of our community to help with the financial costs of their medical procedures. Aside from specific events, several aspects of life at MCHS will be missed. Like Ms. Cahill's mini concerts, writing countless essays from Ms. Adams and Ms. Taylor, Ms. Bailey's love and enthusiasm for science, Coach Hollis's electrifying energy at assemblies, class discussions with a very wise and thought-provoking Mr. Bose, movie nights in ROTC with, with Master Sergeant Means, playing stand tunes at football games with Mr. Hensley and Mr. Davis proudly watching on, the DECA students handling the lunch rushes at the DECA store with ease. The orchestra has fantastic concerts. The drama students spending hours rehearsing to make the performances flawless. The wild and crazy bus rides of the athletic teams and the cheer and palm squad after an away game win. And of course, decorating the school for dress up days and holidays with Miss Friesen. Now, the past four years have been filled with memorable times and long lasting friendships. And it is very important to remember how far we have come. However, since the ceremony is not only for saying goodbye to the past, but also for starting a new chapter in life, I think it's time to start talking about our future. Nobody could have predicted last year the COVID-19 epidemic or that it would fundamentally change our society as we know it. The world is in turmoil right now, but all of us have the power to help and make a difference. We are now entering a new phase in life where we are now responsible for our actions and all choices are decided by us. Each day from now on, you will face thousands of, uh, thousands of decisions, and while some may be less significant, like what you will wear to class, others will be far more important and will potentially have a lasting impact on others. Today, I want each and every one of you to choose to live your best life and to help others achieve theirs. Choose to never give up, no matter what is thrown at you. Choose to persevere and adapt to any obstacles that are in your way, and let nothing stand between you and your goals. Choose to not be alive, but to thrive as well, and live every day to the best it can be. Choose to spread kindness and positivity to help others and provide support for those who need it. We all know the world can use more good in it. You only have one life, one chance to leave a legacy that is comprised of all the decisions that you have made. Choose to create a legacy that helps future generations and leaves the world a little bit better than before. Lastly, choose to live a life you'll be proud of, one with many memories and very few regrets. 10, 20, 30 years from now, I want everyone to be able to look back and say you lived the way you wanted to and that you left no goal unattained, no dream unchaste. You will face a lot of twists and turns in your life, but what matters is how you react to the challenges 
and how you choose to live each and every day. As I conclude my speech, I would like to speak on behalf of the senior class officers, Ashley Peak, Kaylin Strunk, Nyla Fields, and Jacoby Johnson, and say thank you for allowing us to be your class officers. I remember moving to Oklahoma in seventh grade and running for president in eighth grade at Jarman Middle School. Since then, I've been very grateful for the support of my friends and peers, eighth, 10th, 11th, and now senior year. To those who have been voting for me and backing my campaign for the last five years, I'd like to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to be your president. I would not trade this experience for anything in the world. And remember, once a bomber, always a bomber. This is Mark Rose, president of the Amazing Class of 2020, signing off. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for sharing your memories and thoughts. You have done a commendable job as class president this year. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Rick Cobb, superintendent of schools, for remarks to the graduating class. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Rick Cobb. Good afternoon, Bombers. When your senior year began last fall, I'm pretty sure this isn't how you saw it going. We missed school days in August because of storm damage in our community. We had snow days in February. And then on March 12th, it seemed as if our world had quit turning. As much change as we've endured since then, the world actually hasn't quit turning. Though it has seemed at times as if days and hours lack meaning, we have still, for the most part, risen with the sun and gone to bed after it rests. Our response to living in a global pandemic has ranged the gamut of emotions. In conversations with the people close to me and throughout social media, I have seen reactions that are silly and serious, fearful and hopeful, certain and dubious, frustrated and appreciative. The best reactions, the ones that click the most with me at least, are the ones that show empathy. In the simplest terms possible, empathy is the ability to see the world through the experiences and perceptions of other people, trying to understand what other people see and feel. While I can never fully understand what another person is dealing with in life, I can seek understanding of how significant events in your life have shaped you, how your life's experiences affect the way you interact with the world around you. Empathy fuels the best moments in literature, in sports, in film, and in music. Watching a team win a championship or lose one is an emotional journey. TV producers are usually pretty good about framing both sides of this experience in a way that tugs at us. A great book, song, and movie can do the same thing. Empathy is the main ingredient in character development and artistic engagement. Empathy also helps us frame history. Whether we are discussing the Civil War or the Civil Rights Movement, we need to know more than timelines and simple biographies. We need to understand the motivations behind the individuals and groups who shaped public policy and the impacts of those decisions on other individuals and groups. Having empathy doesn't mean that we can feel what other people have felt. It just means that we seek to understand. History, of course, doesn't simply happen in the past. We're living it right now. I'm trying to understand what 14,000 students are feeling, even though I know I can't. It's a slurry of 14,000 different pinpoints plus their families, plus the communities in which we live. The quickest lesson I've learned in this historical moment is that we're all experiencing it differently. Our healthcare professionals and first responders have carried on with their work and they've had to find another gear. Your teachers have continued teaching, all the while proving to be fast and flexible learners themselves. We've all also been impacted by the loss around us. The toll of this moment is immeasurable. This time of year, I usually look out over hundreds of graduates and tell you that where you go from here, the workforce, the military, college, families, it's up to you. And it still is, it, it really is. But wherever you go and whatever you do, I implore you to begin your journey with empathy. Just as there is no singular correct way to handle triumph, there's also no singular correct way for handling loss. We all respond differently we're wired differently. We've been through different challenges in life. When you come across someone else on a different journey or maybe on a different pathway to the same destination, I hope you'll seek first to understand and choose to be kind even when understanding is difficult. You're all graduating from high school today and some of you are excited because you made it this far. Some of you are excited for what comes next. You're both right. And if you're full of dueling emotions right now that you can't seem to reconcile, 
That's right too. Congratulations, seniors. We're all proud of you. Thank you, Dr. Cobbs, for those inspiring words to our seniors. It is now my privilege to introduce Mr. Landon David Boyard. He has the highest GPA of the class of 2020, thus earning the distinction of our top valedictorian. Landon plans on attending Oklahoma State University next fall. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Landon Boyard. This is not your typical graduation speech, nor is it your typical graduation year, or even your typical anything for that matter. My name is Landon Boyer. I'm your valedictorian for this year, but really all that matters is I'm just another member of the senior class facing the same struggles we've all come to accept. I'd like to start by once again thanking all our parents, teachers, faculty, and staff who have supported us from the very beginning of our journeys and who continue to support us now. We may joke about Senior Ditch Day becoming Senior Ditch Month, or two, but we appreciate everything you've done for us and future generations of students. So no, it's not a typical time for any of us, but that doesn't mean we can't celebrate. Think back to all the good times you've had throughout your life. Maybe it's a party with your friends or a sporting event where you're on the edge of your seat, or even just reading your favorite book. These moments, when put together, portray who you are and what you stand for. For me, I look back to just last year where myself and a few other friends started a brass quintet, which evolved into an amazing experience which still exists now and I hope can continue beyond high school. Half the time it wasn't even about music, we just really enjoyed each other's company. Let those moments, the ones closest to you, carry you forward when life wants to pull you back. That way, when Miss Cahill drops a surprise test on you, you'll be comforted knowing that you enjoy your study time. So you might be thinking, well, everybody has a past. That doesn't change what we're going through now, though. And you're right, it doesn't. I can't even stand among my own class of seniors in one of the defining moments of my education. Brothers, sisters, parents, grandparents, and many more have been deprived of an opportunity so dear watching a loved one grow up. All you really want is to be sad or angry or just a mix of emotions you don't understand. Then you want to blame someone for your troubles, but then you find out there's no one to take the heat. And somehow, I, standing here today, am supposed to uplift you and tell you something inspirational that you'll leave happier than you came. That's a tall order and certainly not a typical. But what is anything truly typical about? Every time life throws us a curveball, we're somehow expected to just keep moving forward and accept that that's life. Sometimes we can handle it. If you start throwing me a little curveball, I'm gonna run and get out of the way. Other times, it's tough. You might have to fight hard to hang in there. Maybe that curveball had an alter ego. And even beyond that, we have something so large, it cannot be faced alone. It's what we're going through right now. All the advice we've ever heard tells us, don't lose hope. It'll all be over soon. And then it doesn't end. So you keep trying and trying and trying again and again, but it's like there's a wall between us. In this case, literally. We end up so entangled in our problems that we lose all sight of the other side. You end up questioning what normal means and when it will finally return, how it returns, if it returns. And that's not typical. Is it? I'm just a person, like any other in the world. I'll never truly understand the pain you feel, just like you'll never really understand my own. That's the only typical thing about any of us. We live, we learn, we adapt, and we grow. We move on, eventually, to bigger and better things. High school is only another landmark on that path, no matter how it ends. Remember your past, remember the present we're in now, and think forward to the future that is yet to come. None of them are typical in the same way that none of us are. The only thing we can control is what we make of it. And in spite of all the things we've lost, moving forward and up is the only way we can go. You hear the term Oklahoma standing used quite often in times of crisis. As people from all makes of life come together and just care for each other. But I think there's something beyond that though. I think we hold a bomber standing at Midwest City High School. Whether it's Hog Week, 
community service, our fine arts. We've come together countless times just to help and cheer on our city, state, nation, perhaps even the world. Our bomber pride stretches far beyond the classroom, and that's thanks to our ever important teachers who have instilled upon us a passion that exists not out of homework projects and tests, but of their own and care to educate. We truly cannot appreciate you enough. You've made our school proud. Class of 2020, keep your heads high. Future dream makers, artists, engineers, musicians, doctors, designers, electricians, firefighters, teachers, and many, many more professions are leaving the building this year. Show this school and the world your stronger than ever bomber pride. And for our future seniors, never forget how just another typical year can impact you for the rest of your life. Once a bomber, always a bomber. Thank you. Thank you, Landon, for your words of encouragement to the senior class. Good afternoon. In just a few minutes, you, the class of 2020, will receive diplomas to mark your graduation from high school. The diplomas you receive represent years of hard work, commitment, dedication, and achievement, and will mark a turning point in your lives. This graduation class has a combined total of over $1.4 million in athletic and academic scholarships. As the leaders in our building, you have raised over $100,000 for several different charities over your four years of high school. No one can deny that your senior year ended and it feels like a letdown. COVID-19 is responsible for taking some of your rites of passage. A couple of the big things were your senior prom and an in-person graduation. It's okay to be upset, angry, sad, disappointed, or all of the above. It's okay because it's your last year of high school and you didn't get to finish it. We understand. But most of all, you may feel your senior year ended in failure. I ask that you look at the past couple of months and use it on your pathway to success. All of you will experience failure and disappointment just as a lot of people have, including myself. Believe it or not, failure is a necessary part of your journey. Everyone who has been successful has failed many times over and over. Thomas Edison was in the dark after many unsuccessful attempts to discover the light bulb. And yet history tells us that he did not see his failures as being a waste of time. He said, I have not failed 10,000 times. I have not failed once. I have succeeded in proving that those 10,000 ways will not work. When I have eliminated the ways that will not work, I will find the way that will work. Walt Disney, the founder of the Walt Disney Company. Walt Disney created a company called Laugh-A-Gram. That consisted of creating cartoons, but ended up filing bankruptcy and eventually closing the company. He later created Walt Disney with his brother to produce animated films in 1923. Five years later, he created Mickey Mouse, and the rest is history. Babe Ruth. Ruth is well known because of his home run record in baseball. But for decades, he also held the record for strikeouts. When asked about this, he simply said, every strike brings me closer to my next home run. Just as these legends before you discovered, you will come to find that when an outcome matches your expectations, you don't learn as much as when it doesn't. When an outcome is different than what you expected, you are more likely to learn and grow from it. History has shown you will learn more from failure than success. As you stand on the brink of your graduation, I want to give you some advice about your future failures. One, don't let disappointment, which often comes with failure, upset you so much that you give up and decide to pursue something that is easier and likely more attainable. Playing it safe doesn't lead to greatness. Two, recognize that when it comes to accomplishments, progress, and success, there are three kinds of people. Those who make things happen, those who watch things happen, and those who wonder what happened. A successful person will make things happen. 
Three, failure is a great teacher. Failure has a way of showing what your strengths and weaknesses are while motivating you to correct them. In any area of life, academics, work, play, relationships, etc., failure is often the driving force behind success. For example, Michael Jordan, possibly the greatest basketball player in history, failed to make his high school basketball team. When asked about his early failures, Jordan said, I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Number four, failing builds character. There is a lesson to be learned from everything, including failing. Perhaps the greatest benefit earned from failure is strength. Think about it. If life were perfect and every endeavor ended in seamless success, where, what sort of person would you be? The truth is, failure teaches us more about ourselves and builds character better than success ever could. Number five, failure is acceptable. While a simple concept, accepting failure can be difficult to truly embrace. In the midst of experiencing failure, it is never a good feeling. In fact, this feeling can be downright gut-wrenching. But just remember that failure is acceptable. Lack of effort is not. Michael Jordan said, I can't accept failure. Everyone fails at something, but I cannot except not trying. Number six, failure teaches resilience. Along with making us better people, failing both teaches strength and resilience. Through the discomfort and uncertainty of an epic fail, one will be better able to take on any life's challenges as they come. Resilience is something required of all successful people, and there is no better teacher of resilience than failure. And last, believe in yourself. If you don't, no one else will. So although this is not the graduation that you imagine, you are all still the cream of the crop of Midwest City High School. You are meant to shine and have the ability within. Take charge and liberate yourself and all those whose lives you touch. In short, hold on to your bomber magic and share it with others. Each of you will go your own ways, but will be forever attached to Midwest City High School. Once a bomber, always a bomber. Congratulations, class of 2020, on a job well done, and best wishes in your future endeavors. President Porter, members of the board, and Dr. Cobb, the students of Midwest City High School, class of 2020, have met and exceeded all requirements set forth by the Oklahoma State Department of Education and the Middale School Board of Education. And it is my privilege to present them to you. Seniors, please prepare to receive your diplomas. Michaela Alabesos. Cian Albers. Alana Allen. Amy Allen. Sarah Allen, Andrea Anderson, Mariah Anderson, Nevea Andino, Isaiah Arlano, Monica Armstrong. Alicia Arterberry Clegg. Harley Austin. AJ Ayers. Skylar Bacon. Deasia Baker. Darian Baker. Isaiah Baker Samuel Ball Caitlin Bannister Andres Baquera Nathan Barham 
Elena Basinger, Christopher Batdorf, Caleb Bedford, Matthew Bender, Tanner Bennett, Zariah Bernal, Caitlin Barry, Cameron Best, Tristan Binkley, Marquan Bloomer, Kiera Blue, Landon Bullyard, Lanaya Bond, Caleb Bonham, Consuelo Borboa, Elsie Bordy, Jordan Boyd, Jordan Bramwell, Kirsten Bronner, Dalen Brewer, Michael Bridget, Gabrielle Briands, Daryl Brown, Kamarion Brown, Katie Brown, Reagan Brown, Tierra Brown, Zariah Brown, Alicia Brown Ward, Shantavia Buford, Larissa Burke, Madison Burks, Dylan Burton. Bethany Bush, Jasmine Bustamante, Adriana Butler, Sheridan Butler, Carla Cardoza Carella, Daquan Carter, Navia. Carter, Garrett Cavers, David Caesar, Devin Chamberlain, Colin Sislo, Richard Clements Jr., Serenity Coleman, Adam Conley, Christian Cook, Megan Cook, Kiana Cooper, Dalen Copeland, Kelly Cornelius. Cheyenne Crab, Summer Krager, Ryan Craig, Johnny Chris the Third, Aaron Crudison, Madeline Curry. Kayla Davis, Mark Davis Jr., Nichelle Dawkins, Deshante Day, 
Jacob Dayton. Ernesto De Chavez. Wesley Dedman. Rachel Dennison. Shane Doe. Mackenzie Dawkin. Jillian Douglas. Eva Easton. Abigail Ellis. Marvell Ellis Jr. Aisha Ellison. Tyler Eastep. Petra Estupinan. Amaya Evans. Malachi Evans. Jordan Fansler. Clayton Feldman. Nyla Fields. Randy Fields. Chase Flora. Sierra Fox. Isaac Franklin. Cedric Gaines the second. Reggie Gaither. Elsa Galindo. Willard Garrett the fourth. Amarion Garrison. Aviana Garrison. Celise Garza. Dakota Gatling. Sebastian Gilbreth. Kristen Gilbreth. Dylan Goodman. Kendra Gordon. Davion Green. Benjamin Greenberg. Sydney Gresham. Maya Griffin. Janiah Griffiths. Tiana Hackney. Tierra Hackney. Luke Hahn. Malik Hall. DeMarco Hamilton Gaddis. Sierra Hammonds. Kyle Hansen. Maisie Harity. Kaya Harjo. Ashley Harper. Dominique Harrison. Tavian Houghton. Isaiah Housem. Candace Hawkins. Mariah Hawkins. Corey Heinrich. Isabel Henry. Cora Hernandez. Azriel Hicks. Skyla Hilburn. Justin Hill. Donald Hobbs. Jared Hollis. 
Kennedy Holmes Tiana Holmes Alana Hood Joey Hosford Leroy Howard Jr. Kristen Howe Naylin Howe Eric Hunt Trayvon Jackson Kayla James Cinnamon Jameson Elliot Yanish Omari John Jayra Johnson Jacoby Johnson Jalen Johnson Kamari Johnson Adaria Jones Jaden Jones Jordan Jones Nathan Jones Tyler Jones Tavion Keith Lasky Aaron Keith Sierra Kellum Kiara Kellum Wyatt Ketcher Casey Codaverdi Avila King Jaron King Nicole Knapp Mariah Knox Riley Coon Kennedy Lampley Carly Lancaster Megan Lancaster Kayla Lane Kulanda LaViolet Jasmine Lawrence Donna Lee Michaela Lee Devin Levering Ronald Lewis Jr. Taylor Lewis Tyree Lewis DeMarco Lindsay John Lockett Micah Lofton Blaine Loman Jalen Long Kamaria Love Lyric Love Eric Lynch Jr. Santania Mack Elena Manuel Jessica Martin Micaiah Martin Samantha Martin Jonathan Martinez Cario McBride Emmett McClendon Alexia McCullough 
Cameron McCullough, Marquision McDaniel, Thomas McNair, Nolan Muse, Saraya Menza, Ashlyn Miller. Solomon Miller Monica Mitchell Carmela Mobley Elissa Monroe Lauren Moore Caleb Morgan Tristan Murphy, Kirsten Myers, Amir Navarro, Royana Neal, Sierra Nelson, Jalen Nelson, Miles Nelson. Angelina Newton, Jasmine Nichols, Jewel Nichols, Jordan Nicely, Cameron Norton, Karma Odom, Zamaria Orange Hannah Parker Julius Patterson Ashley Peak Nia Perez Abigail Peterson John Pierce Braxton Polite DeAsia Price Anessa Pugh Brandon Rackard Emma Ramirez Shaylin Rankin Amina Rashid David Ratliff Shawnee Ray Emily Richmond Marquise Richmond Rihanna Robinson Carlos Rollins the second Donna Rolo Brian Rosales Mark Rose Johnny Rowley Jr. Michaela Ruff Raven Russell Joshua Ryan Brianna Sacco Gerald Saucedo Lozano Jeffrey Scott Michelle Self Juan Sexton Jr. Elijah Shaw Kaylee Shaw Raynova Shelton Tiana Simmons Joseph Simpson 
Samuel Sissons, Jaden Swatter, Nicorius Smiley, Jeremy Smith, Zane Smith, Devin Staten. Kenneth Stedman, Darisha Stevens, Jakeem Stevenson, Demario Stevenson Parker, Alasia Stewart, Million Stinson Skeins, Lauren. Stocking Tristan Stoner Kaylin Strunk Yvette Sorez Montero Yasmin Sumrall DeAsia Swait Kayla Sykes Gavin Tamonte, Michaela Tanksley, Robert Taylor II, Trayvon Taylor, Brian Taranez Jr., Brooklyn Thomas, Jemiah. Thompson, Davion Tipton, Cameron Townsend, Lee Tran, Divine Yurza Alvarez, Christopher Vanwald, Alex Vincent. Nicholas Vincent Levante Bontress Bird Isaac Walker Joseph Walker Alaska Walsh Nia Washington Antonio Webb the second Alana West River Wilds Stephen Williams Makia Willis Colin Wilmoth Ariana Wilson, Davion Wiseman, Tony Woods Jr., Jalen Wooten, Abigail Worley, Seth Wren, Jada Young. Graduates, family, and friends, please join us while our choir sings our alma mater.
receiving your diplomas, it is my privilege to pronounce you graduates of Midway City High School, the class of 2020. At this time, please move your tassels to the left. Congratulations, seniors. We did it. Thank you for joining us for this virtual commencement ceremony of the 76th graduating class of Midwest City High School, class of 2020. As with our bomber heritage, let it be known that, please say it with me, once a bomber, always a bomber. This concludes our commencement ceremony. Thank you for joining us.